QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Sales by item reports. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. We are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to take a look at sales by item report, like all other reports other than the major two financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss. It will be supporting add more information to some line item on one of the major two financial statement reports, balance sheet or income statement, in this case, income statement, otherwise known as the P&L profit and loss. Let's start off with that, opening up the P&L profit and loss, going to the reports drop down, company and financial, and profit and loss standard report. Changing the dates up top from 010121 to 022821. We're looking up top at the income area, so we have the income area up top, Remember, the terminology can be a little bit confusing. If in financial accounting, we call the top line revenue as opposed to the bottom line net income. And, uh, but we could call the top line income, oftentimes will. And if we sell stuff like inventory, we often call it sales. When you think about finance terms, then oftentimes they'll try to abbreviate things a little bit more. They'll start always calling the top line sales. Even if you're not selling inventory, sales starts to be the top line, depending on what you're looking at. And then they might just abbreviate the bottom line, net income, to income <laughs> instead of net income, which is confusing because sometimes you call the top line, which is here on the type of the account, called income. So just remember when you're looking at different types of things, especially if you're moving into finance, that uh, you might have some differences in the terminology and you need to define your term before you understand what's going on. So we're going to be looking at an, an income by item uh, report. And so that means we're taking this top line information, the revenue or the income or the sales uh, information, and we want to break it up by what we're selling, meaning the things we sell are either inventory, inventory items, or services, which we call service items within the QuickBooks system. So once again, on the income statement, remember, you're not typically going to break out your income on the top line. You might only have one income item, say sales, if you sell things, uh, sell inventory. You're not going to be breaking out. You don't want to break out your income items by either customer. You don't want a line item on your income statement or profit and loss. In other words, by customer for a major customer or by thing that you sell. because so, You don't want the actual inventory item here. I don't want the actual guitar that I sell. I don't want to have an Epiphone Les Paul income line item typically because I just want to have sales being my inventory sales and then support that sales number with another report which can then give me that further detail breaking it out by item or by customer. So now we, we broke it out by customer last time. Now we're going to break out this income by item. To do that, we go to the reports drop down up top. We can go to the sales item. And once again, notice that this sales in and of itself means basically income or revenue. Like if it was me naming it, I would have called it revenue rather than sales. But sales means kind of like revenue, right? And then if we go over here, we have the uh, sales by customer and then the sales by item. When you think about item, for terminology within QuickBooks, you're thinking about the things you do or the things you sell in order to, ge to generate revenue. That means goods and services or the service items. We can also find them by going to the reports dropdown and the income center. And then I'm going to maximize this report. We're going to go into the standard tab to the left. We want to go then to the sales tab down below. And we have the, the uh, sales by customer up top, meaning, of course, revenue by customer or income by customer. And then down here, we have uh, the, I want the sales by item, sales by item reports. Here we go. So we have the sales by item summary and detail. Let's start off with the summary report, sales by item summary, changing the dates up top from a 10121 to 2821. And so here we have our information, our bottom line sales number, tying out to the 56144. If we go to our profit and loss, we're at the 56,524. Let's take a look at the difference between the two. Pulling out the trusty calculator. And I'm going to say, all right, this is at the uh, 56,524 minus back on over to the sales by item summary minus the 56,144. That's going to be 380. That's going to be an adjusting entry. That's the difference. So if I go back to the profit and loss, in other words, and if I go into the sales item here, we had an adjusting entry down here, an adjusting entry for the 380. Once again, we'll get into the adjusting entries and why we put those in place. Noticing that they can throw things off here. We will do a reversing entry to fix it. 
right afterwards. We'll discuss that with the adjusting entries. But in essence, you can see that we're tying out the sales by item summary to the line items on the profit and loss or income statement. So if I go to the sales by item summary, then we have our, our information broken out between inventory items and service items. These are the things that we do or sell in order to make money. You can We set these things up when with the lists, another QuickBooks terminology, lists, and then the item lists. The items are the things that we're going to use to put on the invoices and sales receipts. And this is where we set up our service items and our inventory items, the actual guitars and that we sell. We sell guitars here, the Get Great Guitars, and then our service items as well. So we have our inventory items and our service items, and we can collapse these. Let's take a look at the inventory items, which will be a bit more complex. We have the quantity of inventory items we sell, in our case, guitars, because that's what we sell. The amount, so this is going to be uh, on the amount that we received and, and all the invoices and sales receipts that we have. The percent of sales, so this is going to break out the percent of the total sales. In other words, this is giving us a nice little... Uh, division problem here divided by the total sales if i pull out the trustee calculator we can say all right well how what's the percentage to total sales of these elps well we got 25500 divided by the total sales down below of the 56144 and that if we, if we move the decimal point over we get 45.41 so that can give us a nice quick look at what our major items are whereas the dollar amount might not be as easy to see so I'm going to close up the service items again. So we'll close up the service items. Then we have the average price. So the average price, meaning that's going to be the sales price, the retail price. Those items are going to be set up typically, or at least in part, when we set up the lists by going to the lists drop down into the item lists. And you'll see it like, for example, the ELP, we're selling it for $500. So that's going to be the average price. Now it could change over time. When it says average price, it's using a weighted average inventory method. So that, that's what that's going to be doing. We'll talk more about that later. The cost of goods sold then 20400 That's going to be the cost of the goods sold. The average cost is going to be 400 That's also driven by the items. So recall when we set up the item, if I edit this item, edit the item, then we have the cost at the $400 that we're going to be setting up. Average, meaning if it changes over time, it's going to be using, like I say, that kind of weighted average type of method. And then we have the uh, gross profit, which is going to be the amount that we sell them for minus the cost of goods sold, giving us the gross profit. And then the gross profit margin, gross profit margin calculated as the gross profit divided by the sales. For example, the 5100 divided by the sales amount of the 25500 which gives us 0.2 or if we move the decimal place two places over 20%. This 30933 you would think would tie out to the income statement and the cost of goods sold for the total here 30988 I should say it should tie out you would think to the profit and loss here at uh, the 31 it's a little bit off if I go to the 31 292 it's off by that 304 which will probably be an adjusting entry if we double click on this item it's off by this adjusting journal entry at the bottom there it is so we'll talk more once again about them those adjusting entries and the reversing entries in the adjusting entry process so sales by item then of course we've got these service items down below these are going to be a lot more easy to think about so if you don't sell inventory then just services, then you don't have all this detail related to the cost of goods sold and the cost of the inventory. We still have the items that we sold, the number of items, because even if you have the service items, you're going to set them up. If I go to the item list by, by what it is you sell, and the, better, the more you can do that, I think that's, uh, that's often a better way to go. In other words, uh, if you're thinking about an hour, you could set an hourly service item and whatnot and bill hourly. But uh, if you could set up you know chunks of what you actually sell and set a price then it might be then a lot of times it's easier for your billing process so in any case we're going to sell a quantity of the service items that we sold on an invoice or sales receipt and then the amount of them we got that percent once again and then uh, the average price because we also set the price in our item lists right here for the service items we set the prices here as well so that's going to be our our sales by item uh, summary report. So these two reports, bottom line are the, on these two reports is when you set up your accounting system, do not be tempted to put an income statement line item, say like an ELP sales income line item every time you sell an Epiphone Les Paul guitar 
and put that on the income statement. Instead, just put it under sales and then pull this information or get this information from a subsidiary report. That's typically how you want to do it. Same for the customer side of things. Don't put like an account on the income statement called, you know, Anderson Guitars Sales to that particular customer, but rather see if you can use other reports to get that added information so that you can keep your profit and loss pretty clean. Shouldn't be too much going on in the income, just major categories up top on the income line items.